Hey everybody, Jake here from Bearded Gear, and I'm finally ready to do my full review on this bad boy. This is the Microtech Combat Troodon Bounty Hunter version. Um, I'm going to try in this review to not go over too in depth um, the couple of things that I seem to say about just about every OTF. So let me right here at the beginning just get a couple things out <laughs> in a relatively quick way for me at least um, and I'm gonna try to not dwell on them too much um, thing number one I think OTFs in general out the front automatic knives open like this close like this are less effective as actual cutting tools than out the side opening folders like if you're comparing knives that aren't fixed blades I think as a mechanism, <laughs> there are inherent limitations here that make them a little bit less effective. Not always way less effective, and this one, we'll talk about some details there, but um, I don't think out the front knives are the best choice if you need like a hard use folder <laughs> that you can trust and is going to slice well and is structurally sound and all that. Um, but I, I don't think they're totally useless either. I mean, I'll just say that. <laughs> um, another thing, glass breakers. I personally hate them. I wish every single one of them could vanish into thin air, never to be seen again. I wish it could be uninvented, the idea of having a glass breaker on a knife. I don't hate, hate glass breakers. It's fine with me that glass breakers are a thing that exist, and to some people, they are useful. Absolutely. Um, I don't think that they are useful on knives. Um, Pete from Cedric and Ada just recently did a video about the uh, Benchmade bailout and he solved it with one simple hacker move, um, the limitation of that knife by removing the glass breaker and switching it with a different backspacer and then throwing the glass breaker on the roof, never to be seen again. I agree with that. Um, and I've ranted about glass breakers a ton of times, so I'm gonna not go into the weeds here other than just to say, I think they have no place on any pocket knife. OTF, folding, it doesn't matter. I don't think they belong on a knife. There. <laughs> um, other than that, I don't think there's anything else that I need to make sure I don't <laughs> dwell on too much. I'm gonna try not to dwell on the glass breaker, and I'm gonna try not to dwell on the fact that I think OTFs have inherent limitations within the platform. Real quick, let me just say what those limitations I think are, to be fair. Um, this one being a single edge is missing one of the ones that I, I find is a limitation for cutting tools. Many of the Microtech OTFs and other brands are going to be double-edged knives. Double-edged is very cool. I like double-edged. It excites me. I think it's awesome, especially in a reverse grip, like a dagger grip, right? It's a dagger type blade. That's cool. Those, those knives are designed for piercing, for stabbing, which means they are generally much less effective at slicing. Blade geometry matters, whether some people like it or not, and uh, blade geometry leads to cutting performance or lack thereof. So this one being a single edged, that's less of a thing here because we have a, a decent height grind for the size of this blade and all that. So again, we'll talk more about that, but the other inherent limitation of OTFs in general, unless you're talking about the one example of the GNG Hawk deadlock, which is like a thousand dollars and virtually impossible to get, um, and very, very, very limited. Unless you're talking about that one. Blade play. Blade play. Like rattling blade play. The way that this mechanism works, it's just been agreed upon seemingly that other than that one example, all OTFs will have some level of blade play. Side to side, and back and forth. This blade will move in here. Does that mean that this doesn't work as a cutting tool? No, but that's not as good as having totally solid lockup. And anyone who would agree or who would argue that having blade play is better than solid lockup, I would never trust <laughs> in talking about knives. That's just me. So OTFs have blade play. The double-edged ones are less good at slicing, generally to be safe but almost across the board, I would say, I, generally. Um, yeah, glass breakers, kill them with fire. I think that's about it. <laughs> so we're gonna try to not go over that, and I'm gonna try to just talk about the knife 
from here on out in this video this one in particular and just kind of rate it amongst the others and all of that okay so um this is of course the bounty hunter version of the combat trodon that is immediately apparent by the colorway the milling on here you can see um, all over the body there's these little hints that make it look like boba fett's armor um, you've even got his rocket launcher back here and then you've got the touch of yellow with the mythosaur on there they're not hiding the ball this is um completely designed <laughs> to be shot for shot this is supposed to be boba fett's armor right um i don't know <laughs> how microtech necessarily gets away with that but i love it these are my favorite version of microtechs generally speaking are these bounty hunter ones i have had the ultratech hellhound bounty hunter before this one and this is my second bounty hunter microtech they put all this wear intentionally all over the scales so they do this like pvd coating on the aluminum right and then they do i think it's red probably cerakote on these components and on the hardware and then they put the yellow paint here and all of it they purposely scratch <laughs> like crazy um which makes it look battle worn maybe but it's also kind of nice for the end user if like me <laughs> you decide to resell this which i'm in the process of that's part of why i'm doing this tonight is i need to get this sold because i'm trying to find an, an, i'm trying to fund another knife that i really want to get right now um these are obscenely expensive so the fact that it's already thrashed <laughs> when it comes out of the box is nice because you can't see wear on it <laughs> like I, not that i've been hard on this knife at all it's, this isn't like a buyer beware. People are probably abusing these or anything. But it's just nice that if I put this in my pocket, I'm not worried about scuffing this pocket clip. It is really pre-scuffed. And normally, if this was on any other Microtech, I would have no interest in the one that comes pre-scuffed up. Right? To me, that just seems backwards. But on this one, it's like, ooh, yeah, this is battle-worn armor. So that's kind of cool. Um, but yeah, the whole idea of this knife is that this is Boba Fett in a knife and they do it across multiple models in their lineup from everything to like the exo set, um, all the way up to the combat Troodon. I feel like I've seen it on a halo before, like a halo six. Um, they do it on the ultra tech, the UTX 85. I don't know if they've done it on the UTX 70 or the D rack or anything like that, but uh, quite a few models in their lineup have gotten this bounty hunter treatment right and it's exciting it's cool i dig it i've been into star wars my entire life i think um some of the more recent movies have been garbage the last one uh, you, there's a case for it being a little bit of a redemption compared to the other two from this trilogy i don't know <laughs> we don't have to go down that path but what i think a lot of people can agree on is that the mandalorian the series is awesome i really enjoy that and another thing that most star wars fans can agree on is that boba fett is an awesome character always has been and so this is cool because it's agreed upon that boba fett is cool <laughs> so this feels like it's his knife which makes it seem awesome it's almost like having a nerdy movie prop but it's also a functional knife and yeah this particular one uh I don't know. You got to be a big fan or really into Microtex or both to get this one because original retail on these was like $760, I think I saw. I traded for this knife. I traded two knives for it from a buddy. And so I didn't pay that out of pocket. I wouldn't have, honestly. Um, but I was able to make the trade deal make sense. And so that's the way I see it. I'm going to be selling this knife immediately. Um, I, I believe I'm personally going to ask about 650 bucks for it. I think that's fair. I don't know what they're holding on the secondary at the moment. I haven't really dug into it, but I feel like for this having been in my pocket a decent bit, um, I mean, hasn't been in my pocket here in California, um, <laughs> for it being in my pocket around the house is what I'm saying. Um, and me cutting a couple of things with it and me being the second donor, that's probably about fair. But uh, yeah, these are ridiculously expensive funny side note sorry this is i guess going to turn into a long video um when i got my hellhound ultra tech bounty hunter i remember showing it specifically to one of my brothers i have two brothers and one of them is more into knives than the other although they both appreciate knives and both carry knives and i showed it to one of my brothers and 
he, he thought I was joking. He thought it was like a $20 knife because if you're not into knives and don't like get deep into the minutia of what makes these expensive, and I, I think they are overpriced if I'm being objectively honest, I don't think this equals $760 I, to me. I don't know. To some people it does. Um, but yeah, I, I think on that one... Because it was the Hellhound and the Ultratech, it was still it was really expensive, not quite as much as this. But I remember I asked him to guess how much it cost, and he was like, "You better not have paid more than forty dollars for this or whatever." Like at a gas station, like he was thought it was hideous and terrible. Um, and I was like, "Well, I should not tell you how much it actually was, right?" But yeah, I don't know. That's just a story, I suppose. <laughs> um, anyway, let's talk about this in particular. So, a couple of things that I really like about this knife. Number one, this clip carries really deep. Now, what's funny is oftentimes why I want to have a really deep carry clip is to be somewhat discreet, and this one has this giant yellow patch with a mythosaur on it, so that doesn't exactly uh, blend in. But it does carry the knife super deep in the pocket, and it's comfortable in and out. I like this clip, the way that it's set up. The only thing I don't like about it I'm not going to dwell on it, but this glass breaker sticks way up. So it ruins the deep carriness of this clip by now sticking up with a red thing sticking out of your pocket. Is what it is. Um, so the clip is really good. Um, ergos on this guy, I actually quite like. This knife ergonomically feels pretty good to me. It's a, a big boy for sure, but it doesn't feel overwhelmingly large in hand, especially when you use this as a thumb ramp. It means that the amount of handle you're actually using is all kind of back here, so it feels good in that way. If I do choke up, still totally comfortable. It's a neutral enough handle while having some grooves and some jimping, but this jimping isn't aggressive at all. Like It's all pretty smooth and rounded, and uh, it doesn't bother me one bit. Normally, uh, most jimping kind of does bother me, so I like that. The jimping on the switch as well, it's rough, but it feels like it should be because it's on the switch. So. That's a thing. Um, and yeah, that doesn't bother me because it seems like it's supposed to be there. So the ergos I like, the clip I like, um, the blade, as OTFs go, I've been pretty impressed with because it is single edge and it's a decently tall grind. It's not crazy thin behind the edge and it does get thick pretty quick above the edge, but it's a, a usable kind of workable blade grind. The geometry here is, is not awful for cutting normal things. And I haven't done a ton of cutting with it, but even just a few times, like I've had this in my pocket and we've ordered food or whatever. And like the bags come sealed in this era, right? When you get food delivered. And so just like opening it up and cutting a paper bag across the top, um, the blade is done fine. This tip is pretty good for piercing tasks, penetrating into things. I've cut some tape on boxes with it. I've cut a little bit of cardboard with it. The edge on here is okay. This isn't a wow edge <laughs> at all um, at the end of the day, but it's it's okay. I, there, I have felt way sharper factory edges than I typically do from Microtech, this one included. And I mean, I don't know. I don't think these at the end of the day are really, I'm sure there's someone who's gonna be real mad that I say this because they use their Microtech every day like any other knife and it serves them super well. I think most people who are getting, not just the Bounty Hunter Combat Troodon, but the Combat Troodon in general, uh, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, but I don't see that many people like really putting them through EDC paces like they would most out the side folding knives. It's okay if you do, <laughs> um, if that's the case. I'd be willing to bet a lot of those people sharpen them and put a, a sharper edge than this on it. But it's okay. It cuts. It does fine. Uh, it's not the end of the world. I don't have paper next to me. Otherwise, I'd cut some paper. But it's an okay edge. Um, the blade profile is what is nice to me about this compared to other OTFs. Compared to any double-edged OTF that I've ever had or experienced, <laughs> this is a way better cutter. The fact that it's single-edged makes it better for that. On the flip side, if this knife was double-edged, I would like it more. Because this knife, to me, is not a knife I'm looking to get a crazy good like level of utility out of. Uh, this knife is a toy <laughs> to me. It is a nerdy, 
fun expression of the hobby. And it doesn't need to be the best cutter in the world to be that. And so, I don't know. I think if I'm being objective and honest about it, I think it would be cooler with a double-edged blade. Maybe double-edged and fully serrated or something. Just crazy. Because this is a super out there knife. Look at this thing. Um, yeah. Or, like I said in my first impressions, if they put the new Combat Trodon Bowie Blade in this, it would be the best. And then they could call it the Bowie Hunter, and it would be a whole thing. Microtech, please steal that idea and do it. <laughs> I would love to see it, and I'd probably want one. Um, anyway, all right. So, the cutting is okay. The carry is... The clip is great. The knife is huge overall. So it feels pretty big in pocket, but it is comfortable because everything is smooth. The profile is relatively trim this way. It's not crazy thick this way, although it's not really thin either. Um, but it's fine to carry. The glass breaker is the worst part of carrying it, and it's is what it is. Um, action. So <laughs> this is something worth mentioning because in my unboxing and my first impressions, this knife was virtually impossible to close with my thumb. Now, as you can see, it's not. I'm able to do it. Apparently, this just needed to break in. And like I said, I'm the second owner. My buddy had this for a little bit before me. He was pretty light with it as well. He didn't really like use it much, but I know he fidgeted with it a decent bit. And uh, he admitted, obviously, that the button was pretty stiff. But yeah, it just took a lot of times of firing it and retracting it for it to eventually loosen up. Um, it was really while I was filming my first impressions about a week, week and a half ago that it, I started to really notice that I was getting it and I've played with it a bunch more since then. And now this still is nowhere near as easy as like my regular Trodon to deploy or retract, but it's now retractable with one hand and it's not the end of the world. <laughs> it was bad at first and, uh, I could have done the old compressed air and rem oil thing. I didn't want to need to do that on a knife that was still it like so close to new in box and hadn't had anything done to it. It just seemed weird to me. Um, so I'm glad that it's broken in, but that's something to be aware of because my first combat drone on was the same thing. When I got it, part of the reason why I pretty immediately sent it on its way was because I could not close it with my thumb. I had to turn it over and do this weird thing where I <laughs> pulled it with like my trigger finger. I know some people also say to kind of hook your finger this way. Um, yeah, like this instead of like this. I don't know. Um, I feel like it's weird that there have to be tricks to close this knife. <laughs> um, it should just come out of the box and be like this where I can see it's still a little stiff. I'm like wincing as I do it. Um, it should be at least this smooth out of box. It should not need to work in to this point. It's one thing when like a folder has an action that like the bearing track is meant to wear in over time, it gets smoother and smoother, but you still don't like, it wouldn't be acceptable for a folding knife to come out of the box that's a flipper and have me press the flipper tab and it'll deploy. But then I go to close it and it's like, I have to use two hands to close it every time. If the design is supposed to be like on bearings and smooth and I just shut it. That, that wouldn't be acceptable. So why on an OTF is it acceptable for it to come out of box from the factory where it'll deploy, but it won't retract to where the average person can just use their thumb and retract it the way it's designed to retract. That's, that's bad. And saying anything otherwise, I think would be dishonest. So I don't think this knife should have come out of the box that way. Um, and the fact that granted it's a very small sample size, but on the two of two, combat trodons that I've personally bought or traded for and had in my own possession, it's been the same story. <laughs> um, so, bad. That's not good. Not the end of the world, but not good. Um, yeah, so the action now is much better. The carry is big, but it's relatively light, and the clip actually functions pretty well for me. The ergos are pretty decent. The cutting is okay as OTFs go. It's actually pretty good. And yeah, I guess that's kind of it on this knife. I think at the end of the day, you're probably picking up by now that I'm not in love with this knife. I think if I had gotten this knife and it came out of the box 
and was this easy to disengage right off the bat. It would have had a better chance <laughs> at me loving it through the whole process, but because it had that like issue, I don't think it's unfair to call that an issue, because it had that issue out of the box, uh, it was a little bit tainted from the beginning, where it was like, this thing is dumb. It's difficult to close. Who wants to carry a knife that's difficult to close? That's a bummer. Like, the only thing worse would be for it to be difficult to open. <laughs> um, I mean, yeah, that, that wasn't a good way for it to start out. And then also just knowing, like, right now in my collection, this is technically the most expensive knife. This costs more than a Koenig Arius does. That doesn't compute for me. Even with it being this fancy pants... Why did I say that's so weird? This fancy pants um, version being the bounty hunter. Like, I'm not saying Microtech should charge what they charge on the regular Troodon for this one that does have this stuff that's been done to it. But it does seem crazy that this is $760. Even the combat Troodon, just in general, is very expensive um, when you consider it's an aluminum body. And they're using decent blade steels. This one's actually not marked, which is kind of weird. Um, I assume it's M390 or LMAX or something. Serial number is 956, born 10 of 2020. So this is a pretty new knife. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's crazy how much these cost. And then, yeah, the idea of having a knife this expensive that is cool and fun, and uh, look at this thing. It's awesome. It's really, really cool. I'm, I'm never going to disagree with that part of it, but for it to be really, really cool, and for that to be kind of where it stops, because it does have blade play. It does have a, a glass breaker, which to me makes me much less of a fan of it. Um, it did have that issue coming out of the box. It's not that great of a cutter, all things considered compared to the knives that would typically go in the same pocket in the same roll that this would. This is a low performance cutter. Um, it's just, it's a lot of money for something that's just to, to be a Star Wars fan, I guess. I don't know. That comes from me who I, I own one of the like, I don't I don't remember how much it was. It's like 100, 150 bucks, maybe, I don't know, more than that. Somewhere around there for like the Galaxy's Edge like cool lightsaber. I have like the Obi Wan lightsaber that you get like in the fancy shop at Disneyland. Um, <coughs> that's like it was expensive, right? And I, I get it; it can be fun sometimes. But this is crazy expensive, and uh, I don't know. I would just I would need to change some things about it for me to feel like it's worth it for me. But to a lot of people, of course, it's worth it. Like this is a popular knife. And I get it. It's a lot of fun. And so if that the funness does enough for you, or the combat thrown on as a model is just one that actually does work for you really well for some reason, then like go for it. This is a really cool version. Buy this one <laughs> if it hasn't sold already by the time um, you're watching this. Like I don't hate it, but it it it's not worth the price tag to me. So it's moving right along so I can fund something else that hopefully does. And I guess that's just the, the way I have to put it. Anyway, this is the Microtech Bounty Hunter Combat Troodon. I feel like they might as well at this point just call it the Boba Fett Combat Troodon. They're not hiding the ball here. It has the Mythosaur on it. It's like clearly the shape of his rocket launcher over here. All of this colorway, it is designed to be Boba Fett. Calling it the Bounty Hunter I don't think is hiding that from Disney, but it is what it is. Um, I think it's hilarious. And uh, he is a bounty hunter, so it's not like it's the wrong name. I, this is a Boba Fett knife. Let's be honest. Um, anyways, this is the Microtech Combat Troodon Bounty Hunter. And uh, I guess that's my full review. So thanks for checking it out, guys. And uh, we will see you on the next one.